Hello, welcome back to this Groove Agent 5 tutorial series. And the first thing to mention is uh, a minor change to the way things look. Uh, I've taken delivery of a new monitor this week and I've taken the opportunity to upgrade my resolution but also have a review of how Cubase looks. So I know we're in the middle of a video series and I apologize if it's a little bit jarring, but here we are with, with a new look. I hope everything is still clear and visible to you. I've tried to make Cubase more presentable, a little bit lighter, uh, and hopefully everything is a little bit easier to see, even though everything might be slightly smaller. Today we're dealing with the main page of the instrument section. So here we have this djembe um, sound, and we can see immediately that there are, what's that, eight samples, and they're velocity layered. So if I play a D1 very, very lightly, it plays that quietest sample. If I actually click in the pad itself, then it will select the appropriate sample for me and we can hear the various samples. But if I play it on the keyboard, it doesn't auto select for me. And you'll know if you've played the selected one, there we go, because you'll see the play line strobe across the screen. So you can play like a little bit mini game with yourself to try to actually play uh, the sample that's uh, currently visible and in fact in all seriousness I actually use this um, for velocity training if I'm trying to get into the, the frame of mind where I, I'm hitting the key at a, a volume that I want to hear I'll actually select um, a sample in Groove Agent and then only when you play it at the right volume will, uh, will it actually strobe across the screen anyway let's get on with the, the instrument itself this djembe A hit is in velocity mode as we've seen. So we've got the eight samples and for each selected sample, we can see the velocity range here, 50 to 66. Each of these um, boxes has a, a selector curtain that can be dragged left and right. And that's the easiest way to change volumes. You can never have two samples in this view overlapping each other. If you decrease one, if I drop this to 70, and we select this sample over here, then the upper range will be exactly uh, one MIDI value higher at 71. Now on the right click sub menu for this um, sample bar, we have some options here, but you need to be really careful. If I uh, right click select this sample and say cut, it'll throw them all away. And that's because we're currently in pad mode. This little button up here, it's tiny, it says edit selected samples or pads. If I switch to cell mode instead, rather than pad, now when I right click on that sample and say cut, it throws that single sample away. So this button up here determines whether or not you're operating on the entire pad or on one individual sample within that pad. While we're up here looking at these buttons, we might as well cover the other two off. This uh, little solo button only works when you're in cell mode. If you go back to pad mode, it disappears and it solos the, the currently selected sample. So because we're in velocity mode here, we're only going to hear this sample if we play, if we hit the key at the right velocity. If I play really softly, you don't hear a sample. I just press the key as lightly as I could there. And there, I have to hit the key at the right volume to actually hear the sound. Now that's kind of not very useful when you're in velocity mode, but if you're in layer mode, this basically means all samples are played on all velocity ranges for the entire pad. And so this combination of options, layer plus cell plus solo, allows you to zoom in on individual sound and always hear it. So it doesn't matter if I play really, really softly or very loud. Now we've thrown away that velocity layering and we can hear that sample completely and exclusively and this is the best way to edit. If you want to edit a single sound within a multi-sample layer or selection pad, then cell plus solo plus layer is the way to do it. Now I've just reverted to last save kit to throw all of the previous changes away because I need to explain relative and uh, this relative option up here to you and it's a little bit confusing. Let's have a look at the volume. All of the volumes on the samples for the current pad are all set to minus five. 
if I change one of the volumes in absolute mode, all of the other volumes for all of the other samples change at exactly the same amount. If I go to selected mode and change one volume, all of the others stay at their previous value. If I go back to pad mode and enter relative mode, it basically means that any change that I make to one control has the same percentage change on all of the other controls. And this percentage change thing uh, is, is really confusing when you're first trying to learn it. So here we have a volume at, I'm gonna set that to exactly minus two. And I'm gonna set this volume to exactly four. Now I just edited that value. and When I go back over here, it's no longer at minus two. That's because all of the changes that are being made are being made relative to everything else. I'll switch back to selected sample mode temporarily so that I can now change that to minus two. Absolutely. This sample stays at, at four. Absolutely. Now back to pad mode so that I make a change on one sample and it's going to affect all of the others but what change is it going to have well if i go from four, there's a six decibel difference between these two samples at the moment if i go from 4 db to 5 db let's have a look at what happens on the other sample so it was previously at minus two and now it's at 0 0.3 the changes aren't being applied at an absolute fixed number of decibels change, there are percentage change depending on what the value currently is set to. So basically, however much I move this knob by, all of the other knobs on the on the uh, on all of the other samples are being moved physically by that much, but you're making percentage changes to these values, and so you can't rely on any of the other volumes being an absolute set fixed number. You can, however, rely on them all having their knob turned by the same amount, by the same relative amount. So relative mode is a percentage-based change being applied to all samples on a single pad. These zoom settings down here are really, really useful. This A button down here uh, basically zooms you out so that you can see the entire sample. If you toggle it, let's um, change the zoom setting to something else and it has a toggle function. So it's either the entire sample or whatever you were previously looking at. We can zoom to the start of the sample or to the end of the sample. There's actually nothing at the end of this sample. Basically flatlining. We can manually increase and decrease the zoom and we can pick a little thumbnail up and drag it that way as well. I've avoided looking at this one at the moment. Zoom to selection loop sample range. I need to show you sample ranges before we have a look at this fella. So here we have an entire sample. And I'm just going to enter layer mode so that we can hear this one. Now, did you spot my deliberate mistake then? Uh, I entered layer mode, but I didn't solo it. So you're actually hearing every single sample on that pad there. Now we're just hearing the individually selected sample. See these little orange squares that say set sample start and set sample end. Now it just plays that part of the sample. The little white box above allows you to set fade in and fade out. Now be careful, if these two things join, oh, I can show you this feature now, press that and it zooms out to whatever your selected range is, your sample range. Now that we've joined these two things together, watch what happens. If I come in from the right hand side and pick it up, you move both of them together. If I come in from the left hand side and pick them up, you move them as well. and they kind of glue together. What you're basically doing is, if you come in from the left-hand side and grab, you've actually grabbed at the fade-in line on the, opposite, on the opposite side. So this is the fade-out that I've just grabbed there. And 
if I move to the right, there it is. So it can seem like, oh my goodness, these are stuck together and how do I unglue them? Just kind of pull it a little bit further and they do detach. The blue box down at the bottom says select velocity start range. And if I move that to the middle of the current sample range, if I play a very soft note, watch where the sample starts from. It's really, really quiet, but it's starting. The quieter I play it, the closer it's starting to the blue line. If I hit it hard, it goes right back to the beginning of the sample. So this set velocity start range basically says, depending on how hard you hit the key, start either on the blue line for the quietest or the start of the sample for the loudest. And that basically allows you to have your transient at the beginning of the sound, which has got all the energy, all the violent kind of, you know, initial sound of the sample. You only get that stuff when you play the sample very loudly. So it allows you to control how much transient you get, depending on how hard you hit the key. Really cool. Throw all that stuff away. Let's have a look at some of the options here. Round Robin plays every one of the samples in turn. So if there are eight samples here, playing these notes with as constant a velocity as I can possibly manage. And it's cycling round all of those eight samples. And can you see that it was only actually um, showing the play bar once for each of the eight samples because it was playing around them. If I solo this, you'll get seven silences. Apart from the fact that my key is really loud and it's right next to the microphone. Random genuinely plays all of these samples randomly and you can have the same sample repeated any number of times. Just come out of solo mode. Just played two of that sample then, that was fortunate because that illustrates the difference between random and random exclusive. Random exclusive guarantees that it never plays the same sample back to back. Other than that, the selection is completely random. Poly stipulates how often you can re-trigger the same pad and have the entire sample play that many number of times. So if I choose this djembe roll, you can see it's currently got um, Poly set to six. It, actually, it's a round robin sound as well, so it's going to play different samples, but we don't care about that. The round robin thing is used to add natural variation to the sample. We've basically loaded ver four very simple samples onto the pad, and because it's in round robin mode, it sounds like just very, very slight human variance uh, on the instrument. So it's not designed to, to sound fundamentally different, just very, very slight tonal inflections. It's really, really beautiful. Um, sample modeling in these uh, in these preset packs. So here we've got poly six, which means I can hit this this pad six times and it will play all of the samples stacked on top of each other. If I set that polyphony down to one, it will basically, as soon as I hit the pad a second time, it's like an exclusive group, it stops the previous pad playing. ever hearing one instance of it. And there you can hear very clearly the two pads starting to stack on top of each other. So with six, you, 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 that's, that's an awful lot of layering that you can generate. You get that sense of like lots of people playing simultaneously. We've already dealt with exclusive groups in a previous um, video, but just to cover it here because for the sake of completeness. I've got a roll here and a hit here. If I set each of those sounds to exclusive group one, and there you can see, they're now both assigned to exclusive group one. As soon as I hit any other pad in the same group, all previous pads are choked.
fade tells you how long to fade out when um, sounds are forcibly stopped. It's just a little bit of grace period for each sound to fade away elegantly rather than being you know cut off brutally. Down at the bottom we've got some pretty obvious controls, volume pan, coarse and fine tuning, shouldn't need to explain. If I enter layer mode and solo it so that we guarantee that we're always playing the sample we want to hear. And fine gets you one semitones worth of um, increment. This is our output destination. I'm going to deal with output separately, so we'll ignore it for now. But this is basically the bus uh, to which this sound is being routed. Then we've got playback quality. Now what this does is in anything other than standard mode, uh, basically reduces the quality of the of the, the sampling. It's to emulate like old style drum kits. A good way of demonstrating it is to have a listen to this rim sound. So I had to put it in layer mode then because I was still soloed. So that's the sound of the, of the drum on its own. And if I detune it, detunes quite elegantly. But in vintage mode, that is all sorts of artifacts being introduced by the bitrate not being high enough to be able to handle that level of detune basically like aliasing and because like drum kits from the 80s and 90s sounded like this the the, um, the functionality is being emulated so you get a lot of graining there as opposed to and with the filter we can get some really crazy sounds now these are different kinds of uh, saturation engines that we can apply to all of our different sounds. So here's a tube drive, cutting the high frequencies away, bring some distortion in, resonance, and rate reduction settings you can get some genuinely extreme sounds I'll just turn the volume down because this can be nasty yeah I thought it would be some nasty mean angry sounds Ooh. there's the resonance self oscillating that's the main page dealt with. I mean, I, I did say Groove Agent was, was quite the monster. There's an awful lot to go at, and it seems like every time you open a new door, you know, there's an entire brand new vista to, to explore. I would say spend some time trying to get your head around these buttons up here. The various combinations of them are absolutely mind melting, uh, and they, they do take a while to get used to. Be careful of being in absolute mode and changing a value and accidentally throwing away a load of editing you've previously done. You know, if you're going into this kind of functionality, save regularly, make backups regularly, because it's really, really easy in absolute plus pad mode to change one of these values and then every other value on the sample that applies to that knob has also just been overwritten. So, you know, just beware of that. Definitely in need of a cup of tea now. I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching.